I could just pick on someone. What was discussed here, did you order that? Could you maybe give a summary of what you discussed? Um, we were kind of talking about um, sort of neo burlesque and the fact that it seems in some ways now to be going sort of beyond the striptease. And I wonder whether you can maybe talk a little bit about it because it's something that I'm quite interested in. And I'm seeing kind of stuff now that is not kind of performance art, maybe in the sort of fine art performance art context, which is really good, but um, how, how do you feel sort of taking off your clothes? But it's all about that, really. <laughs> okay, well, I guess um, a lot of what I do is, is uh, live art, and, and some of what I, I do is, could be termed as burlesque or neo burlesque or whatever. Um, um, essentially, I'm really interested in the body in performance and always have been, um, and so that is my starting point in what I explore. Um, and it's interesting to, to hear you say that it does go beyond the burlesque because I kind of in that piece that was looking at going beyond the, the body, if, if you will, um, and sort of looking at the, the body as, as other and um, beyond sort of like the, the, the typical um, pres presentation of the body image in, in the burlesque genre. Um, uh, looking at the, the ugly side of, of ourselves, really. Does that answer your question? Yeah. So what did, just to put you on the spot a bit for a bit longer, <laughs> what did you make? You said there's something more than a burlesque performance. What is that more and um, how did you sort of, how did you read that? Did you, did you, what did you think of the freakiness around uh, the Bruce of Bruce? I think for me it's kind of something that I'm trying to figure out, not only with your performance, but um, kind of stuff I've been seeing maybe over the last six months, which um, yeah seems to be exploring the sort of more ugly side of things, which is really good. And um, I'm from a fine art background, and I see people who sort of perhaps trying to do what you do without awareness of sort of this form of like live art performance. Um, so for me, I'm just trying to work out maybe the conflict. Sort of find out very much from yourself, right. something like this, which isn't necessarily good at all. Um, it's really interesting about space and what constitutes what type of performance. Does anyone want to add into that, or you can move to another table? How about you? Could the, could the question be posed at you similarly? So, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Upside down a lot. I've been on my head a lot. So. <laughs> well, let me ask you a question. Sort of, um, do you consider yourself a freak, and what does that mean? Um, yeah, I guess I have become somewhat of a freak because um, I do things that people don't normally don't don't normally do. Their their feet are here, their, their head is here, and so through. I actually got into doing what I do through yoga, through a sort of health healthy kind of side. But then at its, at, at its extreme, it became unhealthy. So health and other health kind of met. A bit like politics, really. The far right and the far left kind of become a bit similar, you know. So I, I started doing something healthy and then ended up kind of being with people skewering things in themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember if that relates to the question. Or not. Uh, that's good. Okay, let's move on. Um, let's go around then. Question over here. Hi, I wanted to know why um, why we want to say it's freakish and not skilled, because actually I think there's something of that definition that we want to make now, and something especially in the documentary I was, and I, I apologise it's not very well thought out, but actually I was thinking that the reality show is now our freak show of the times, and that there is I actually think it's in the bodies that we've been shown today. I actually think there's something more freakish in the beauty pageant, in the sort of, um, if we want to say that there is something deficit in these bodies, but actually in trying to over amplify the bodies and put prosthetics on and cosmetic surgery, I, I worry, for me that is more freakish than these, these bodies that we're shown, and I, I just wanted to, yeah. I'm, so uh, why do you think it is more freakish? What kind of judgment do you think you're making? Because we're, we're, we're interested in looking, aren't we, as much as the sort of bodies displayed and things. 
I wonder, is it maybe something of perhaps a naturalness or, 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 or and then sort of recreation? Like there's a, there's a choice, maybe it's a, a choice <coughs> that, yeah. I mean, that's what I said at the moment. I, I can't really express where I want to go with it. It's just something I want um, to Maybe, Louise, you want to say something about naturalness because that's kind of part of your discussion. I think that there's, there's a host of, of um, dualisms in terms of natural, unnatural, freakish, not freakish, beautiful, not beautiful, and the way in which those dualisms are created through, I, I mentioned Foucault again, sorry, but what, what he called normalizing judgments. So if we look at a beauty pageant from a particular perspective, the normalizing judgment is these bodies are beautiful and therefore they're allowed to display them in particular kinds of ways and they're not seen as freakish because there's a normalized way of looking at them and enacting the bodies. Whereas the, the people I was talking about, the Victorian freaks, my body is not <coughs> subject, it's subject to a normalizing judgment and then seen as abnormal and worse is seen as unnatural because the unnatural is about it's not male, it's not female, so what is it? that makes sense? And although you could argue that my body is a natural product, it's, it's kind of constru constructed and construed as unnatural because it doesn't conform to another idea of natural, which is it either has to be male or female. So there's a paradox, if you like, in terms of the natural. And the way that paradox is played out is this body can't be natural. And then uh, what I was saying about the Victorians is the way they explain that unnatural body is through this idea of atomism or de-evolution. So my body is primitive and it's, it's a body that existed in pre, kind of prehistoric times, if you like. And I, I'm almost a throwback. That makes sense. And my body needs to be got rid of because it's not a progressive body, it's a regressive body. And in that sense, it's unnatural. Because evolution is supposed to go forward and not backward. Newness is not an evolution. Say again? Newness is not an evolution. Newness well, this is the, the kind of the, um, received wisdom coming out of Darwinian evolutionary theory that evolution progresses forward. And my body isn't a form of forward progression. And this is the evolution. Do you think that's like, still true? Is that how we yeah. 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 So maybe say a bit more about contemporary um, constructions around. Um, gen, gen well, certainly around, around intersex bodies in particular, with very, very few exceptions, almost every nation demands that intersex bodies have to be naturalized as either male or female. Now, the way in which they do that is completely unnatural because people have to take artificial hormones, they have to have surgical interventions in order to, quote, naturalize their bodies. Because there's this all-pervading idea about gender and sex is that it's a diet. And we don't allow any variety or variation. You're either a man or a woman, a boy or a girl, end of. And do you think, um, maybe Lisa could pick on this, that current contemporary freak shows, such as the one that you featured, um, is doing some of this work in terms of challenging the, the, the uh, diet, as you say, binary? Not just mainly, not just about gender, but maybe all bodies. I think for me, the, the freak is, it's the positioning. So just to go back to the, the contrast between the beauty pageant as a, as a freakish sight and then the freak show. I mean, I can see the parallels. But I think what's really important is freaks are positioned as freaks within a language of deficit and deficiency, which you know, is produced within biomedicine, within um, medical science. So I think what's interesting for me is people who are defined as freaks, as in the, 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 the freak show that the documentary follows, are responding to the way in which they've been positioned both within the medical system, but by peers on the street. So I think this is really important to think about perhaps the difference between cosmetic surgery and prosthetics and enhancing and, and augmenting bodies and then people's responses to the way they've been positioned which will produce shame, 
it will produce um, individualized feelings of pain, uh, depression possibly. And I think that for me, as, as I said in, in, in response to the show, I'm much more interested in what's off stage as well, rather than just focusing on the body as image. Um, Anyone want to add or ask a different type of question? Yeah. Question for Robert Mann. Sorry, I've forgotten your name. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm interested in yoga and meditation, and obviously the discussion is around the body uh, and so on, but I've just looked through the notes and you do a lot of meditating and visualise yourself as a rubber band. So I want to know to what extent... <laughs> I think that's what it said, I've got my glasses on. <laughs> um, I'm just interested in about slightly maybe going off the subject, but you know, the correlation of mind and body. How much of what you do is your body and how much of your mind? I'm just interested in that. Did you say uh, levitation or meditation? <laughs> meditation. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah. Um, actually, I'm afraid the uh, remark about meditating on a rubber band was uh, a little lie. <laughs> um, for some amusement, um, I did. I did some meditation. I, I was. I was. I went to Buddhist temples and yoga centers and this kind of thing. And um, I did a lot of yin meditation, but I didn't have much success. I had more success with the body than the mind. So I think. I think I. I think the struggle with the mind was too tough, and so I, I went for the struggle with the body. I thought oh, I can handle that. Yeah, but the mind. Oh my God. I so couldn't. you say you don't have a use visual or something yeah. in order to manipulate the body do you visualise things or how does your mind play out in that body yeah. or does it just go well? I mean I'm, I think basic things like being optimistic and kind of pushing myself on to do things but yeah my kind of meditation career has sort of come to an abrupt failure really <laughs> Okay, we'll have one, one more question. Right over here. Um, it's actually kind of a couple of questions. Yeah. Um, oh, um, I was just wondering, first on a very immediate level, uh, having watched your performances, in particular your costumes, I'm guessing you coordinated. <laughs> <laughs> if not, that's even more interesting. <laughs> I was just wondering if, you know, Pinstripe being a kind of Oh, emblem of the conventional <laughs> kind of thing. I mean, it, I mean, it was just quite striking to me that you are both wearing, you know, ultra conventional styled costumes. I was wondering, I would, I'd like to hear a bit about that and the way of, you know, costumes covering the body and as another element that you can bring into to that kind of work. And then also, sort of on the more academic side, I was really interested to hear you mention um, Darwinian theory because the whole point of, of Darwinian evolution is to develop through sort of aberrance and freakishness and deviance. Sure. Um, and I was just wondering if that's something which is, is talked about in the literature today, or if it's something that even within a Victorian context, if there was any engagement with that, what well, seems to be a bit of a paradox, that on the one hand, embracing this as a, a model of how the world works, but culturally rejecting what seems to be signs of it in action. Okay, so if we have a response to that, and then we're going to have an interval for the... Do you want to respond to the person in the costume? Yeah. Costume? Um, I'm, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but it, <laughs> it wasn't pre-planned, um, the pinstripe thing. Um, but I guess what is... Yeah, I mean, the conventional thing, yes, we do. We do play with that quite often in, in the kind of genres that, that we work with. Um, but to do... With costume, in, I think for me it's a, it's a layering um, and also what we were talking about for going beyond uh, beyond conventions and uh, in performance um, and the depiction of, of those. So for me what's interesting in, in is removing the layers and presenting um, the next layer. So uh, after you do have the costume and the restriction of corset and and you have the bo the body and is is it the skin and what I what are you revealing and then and what is and that the next layer and the next layer it's kind of like and the next trick and the next trick but it's more personal. Add anything? Um, I mean, with me, I, I chose pinstripe because the sort of 
conservative city gent is, is known to be kind of stiff and uptight. So it worked well as you know, flexible in that position instead. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Interstroy just coincides really. <laughs> Maybe we should do it now. Yeah. <laughs> just adds up to a groupie, so. <laughs> I have another festive character for the Twistmas. <laughs> just, just very quickly, I think for the for the Victorians, their idea of evolution was never purely scientific. It was always infected by religion and Christian thinking in particular. And so, I think they found it very, very hard. Even though they talk about mutation and the idea of, of bodies evolving through mutation, I think. As far as gender goes, they found it very hard to get away from the idea that God created Adam and Eve, period. Um, so the suggestion to them that these strange hermaphroditic bodies could actually be an advance <laughs> in evolutionary terms, I think it would have been completely sinful, let's put it as boldly as that, sinful thinking, her heretical thinking, because it goes against everything that's in Genesis. Um, in terms of the present, I'm not aware of anybody, uh, I think it's a really, really interesting point and, a, and a, worth, a point worth pursuing. I'm not aware of anybody looking specifically at, gen, at gender variation as a sign of evolutionary progress. But what people tend to focus on is bodies becoming sleeker, taller, lighter, um, and, and that tends to apply to both men and women. And, I, and people tend to be thinking more in those terms rather than gender variance. But, Something I'd like to pursue. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, panel, for your attention and your uh, contributions. We'll come back at 8.20 um, and then Laura will tell us what's going to happen.